took uh, one uh, one year and uh, really we start to uh, organize uh, the workshop three months ago and uh, I'm uh, it <laughs> so it was uh, it was really a success because we 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 um, I don't Need many of uh, participant of this uh, of this uh, of this team. Just maybe Rose and uh, Maria, and so we use it. We use online. Uh, we use internet to to promote and to contact many organization in order to to present youth issues like privacy. And uh, align children safety. So, uh, one of other uh, important uh, initiative that uh, I took part and I am currently the coordinator is uh, the IGF uh, Wikipedia initiative, which uh, which. Uh, how to say it uh, involve many of people from all uh, regions from Latin America from Africa from uh, Europe from Asia and it's in the it's in the uh, in the uh, in the spirit of IG because it's it's um, it's for multilinguism, as we have many the, um, many Wikipedia entries in Spanish, in uh, in French, in Portuguese, and also in Tagalog, <laughs> and so, and other language. And uh, one of the most important moment is the when we we had the statement on the last open consultation in September, and we. We many people uh, were and are willing to join our initiative. Uh, so, <laughs> other uh, project is uh, the remote participation working group, which uh, um, I was. Uh, I am really happy to to be uh, to 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 work with Marielia, Ginger, and Raquel, and. For example, I, 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 the, uh, the first time that I meet Raquel we, well, is in, uh, in, uh, in India, and we, we, we did a, a lot of, of uh, I think we did a good job, and uh, we reached, uh, we reached our goal to allow many people from developing countries to participate in, in on internet governance issues in the spirit of uh, Diplo Foundation work. And so, <laughs> um, uh, so I will uh, conclude that uh, after my uh, the ICCP program. I uh, I was interested. I am interested by many subjects. Among as uh, among them, uh, it's uh, the internet property uh, issues, and I am really happy to to inform to inform you that I will uh, we start involving with Creative Commons on uh, in Tunisia about to uh, to start the Creative Commons uh, license in Tunisia. So, thank you. Thank you, Rafik. Uh, I know that you would find it much more easy if I would have allowed you to speak in French. But uh, this was a challenge, and before the session, he, when, he told, when we told him, uh, you should say something about your activism, he said, no, I, I don't want to do that. I mean, I, I don't know, my English is not good, and so on. And I remember one, one time uh, when I had a similar situation, not about a presentation, but a project, and I asked Jovan, but Jovan, can I, can I really do that? And he said, well, you know, in Diplo we have a philosophy that we put, push you in the water and you start swimming. So you swim out and that's good. And we have to prepare you to, to be a, a, a leader of this process, right? <laughs> Thanks, Rafik, a lot. Now, 
uh, it, it's really my pleasure to have you on the on the, on the panel because you're you're an excellent example of a, of a person who who has a lot of motivation and energy to get into into a process, and uh, you invest a lot of energy in in, in different uh, panels and different activities. Um, one of these activities, and thank to you and really and uh, Raquel and and uh, others, uh, we have this remote participation from. Uh, from Hyderabad, uh, we had uh, a good uh, panels with the Belgrade hub the, uh, yesterday and today, um, and I'm very happy to know that this this really took place. And I would, at the end, I'd li like to ask uh, a beautiful lady to to tell us a bit more about that project, Amelia. Thank you, Vlada. Good night to all, and uh, thank you very much for staying here until this late to be here at this workshop. Um, I'm going to be brief, I'm not going to bore you too much, but I just wanted to call attention to one aspect of the capacity building program that I think it's really important, which is the possibility that the participants have to maximize the knowledge that they acquired by taking place taking part in projects and activities that go beyond training. And to illustrate this, I'd like to talk to you about the remote participation working group, which Hafik has already mentioned. And this group was created by people that are part of Diplo community, but it's ha it has now expanded and uh, transcended the walls of Tipu, and it's a group much broader and composed by people from all over the world that have given us their efforts and inputs to make it possible. So as you could see from the previous speakers' presentations, Deep World methodology is based on intensive collaboration and interaction among the participants. So they are the ones that build knowledge throughout the course. It's their responsibility to build knowledge and they have to do it together through the platform. So after a few months of interaction through the platform, it's very easy for them to know the interests and expertise of their peers. And as not only a participant, but now as a tutor of the capacity building program, I think I am allowed to say that what I observe is that the participants develop a strong sense of community and academical trust among uh, one another, which is the ideal environment to move up further projects together. So once they identify the common interests with their peers, uh, many times they Go, they, they build together smaller groups and communities to work together co towards common goals. So this is exactly what has happened with the remote participation working group. I mean, I met Ginger in the e-voting course and Rafik that was found of Web 2.0 and Interaction and myself, I have developed a master's that studied how internet can foster civil society participation in integration processes such as European Union and Mercosur. So when they met, we said, oh, let's do something together. And we had some ideas about remote participation and we wanted um, to make sure that people that are not able to attend the IGF for several reasons could not be excluded from this process but take part remotely. That's why we created the Remote Participation Working Group which has a very clear objective which is build bridges between the ones that cannot attend the IGF and we that actually had the opportunity to be here. So the strategy to put this in place was to start contacts with communities and groups locally to put together local IGF hubs. And what are these IGF hubs? They are local meetings which exhibit the webcast of the IGF as well as interact not only with the main sessions but also with the parallel meetings using a platform which is called Indium. You must have seen it working uh, in the other sessions or main sessions or workshops that you have attended. And I would like to register here, I don't know if they if they are still here, but my thanks to the Dim Dim team who has worked. Yeah, thank you, thank you. These are actually these are images from another session that is taking place. Oh, for now session. Okay, okay. So as you can see, people 
people are able to, to interact um, through dialogue and actually in parallel sessions they have sent video questions so they actually appeared on the screen. A person who is in a hub in Belgrade, in Spain, in Brazil can actually appear on the screen and everybody at the IGF may see that question and may see that person. So it's a, a, a whole different interaction from what we saw comparing to last year we had the webcast only but the, the broad, the, the scope of the interaction was much narrower than this year. So our idea is that the, the hubs may serve as a starting point, not only to, to remote connect to the IGF, but also to build local communities and networks, because we thought that one important aspect of the IGF is to build networks. It's very important to be here inside the rooms, but what happens outside the rooms, that we talk to people with common interests and uh, find someone to work together, this is a very important part of the IGF too, and we wanted this to happen locally, because we know that in our cities there are people that work with uh, common themes and they don't know each other and the hubs are a place for these people to get to know one another. So some of the main advantages of the creation of hubs, uh, some of them I have already mentioned. The first one is that it increases the visibility of the IGF uh, because hub organizers are natural publicity for the IGF and the local media is more likely to cover an event that is pl taking place locally than one that is taking place overseas. It raises awareness on IG issues, it favors long-term commitment because if someone watches the webcast from home, he can and shut up the computer and shut down the computer anytime he feels bored. And once this person is in a meeting, interacting with peers, it's more likely that this person will stay in the debate until the end and will, in fact, build long-term relationships with uh, peers. It favors community building and networking locally, and it favors follow-up initiatives, and this is something very important. From local hubs, people may find uh, one another and start projects, concrete projects locally from the remote hubs. So uh, the idea is that the hubs may have a positive impact on the IGF by not only reinforcing legitimacy, but also le by reinforcing a new stakeholder characteristic, which is a aim of the IGF to achieve by empowering individuals. We know that many people that come to the IGF, they come with a support and background of organizations, but individuals that don't have this kind of support, they are they don't are very uh, inserted on the debates. They can have the same chance to participate and be here. So it reinforces the mood stakeholders by empowering individuals. So I put together different hubs. There is one missing here, that is Colombia. We recently found out that we have a hub in Colombia too. And the number of expected participants, it's more than 2,000. So um, it's like another IGF that is taking place locally. To finish my presentation, I'd like to emphasize how this process has moved, moved forward from uh, the capacity building program that is where we all met, from the e-voting working group where we found each other, um, to the remote participation working group that has now transcended not only the walls of the capacity building program, but also the walls of Diplo Foundation, and has included many other individuals which have put together these hubs that in turn are contributing meaningfully to the global process of the IGF. So um, we put together this group with specifically the IGF Hyderabad in mind, but we want to continue working the next year, improving the hubs and making an evaluation of what took place this year, making an evaluation of the hubs experience and maybe proposing new channels for remote participation. We'd like to join you if you are not still in this community, we'd like to join you to take part in this effort. Our website is on the screen and also my personal email, write me if you have any doubts. Thank you very much and thank you for Dipu for giving the support to make this possible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marilia. We are uh, close to the end, but as this is the last session, I guess we can take some more time if there are questions. I remember two over there and then the others, if anyone wants. Good evening, friends. Uh, greetings from a fellow distance educator. 
I am from the just referred Indira Gandhi National Open University, working at Hyderabad. So my greetings from a local participant in the global uh, conference. So let me share some of our experiences in using the distance education, and also let us comment uh, on your uh, experiences shared by the students. At the outset, let me compliment the uh, Diplo for giving excellent uh, environment, academic environment for the learners across the globe. It is the technology that is utilized for giving, increasing the numbers, access to more numbers. What Dr. Ginger has shown in the initial slide that there is a one-to-one -one contact from the teacher to student. But through technology, we can use the single teacher to multiple users. So I'm very happy that uh, the, all the learners are getting the true academic environment. And it is not simply providing the information on the internet that is called education. It is the human touch that is more important. And you are providing it. I should congratulate you, the, all the faculty in the diploma for that activity. And coming to IGNO, let us share my ideas and uh, how we are using technology in, the, uh, in reaching to the larger number of people. I am happy to say that IGNO is the largest university in the world having 1.85 million students on its rolls. 1.85 million students. And we do use the technology which is available to us, like two-way video conferencing and to one-way video, two-way audio teleconferencing. You know, looking into the social conditions of India, we do provide the toll-free telephone facility to interact with our teachers who are sitting at Delhi. So across the country, whoever are watching the program, they can interact with our experts. That's what I said, the interactivity is more important in an education purpose, rather than providing a single information, one-way information. And we have around 1,800 study centers across the length and breadth of the country. So I should suggest that, as she was telling at the end, that you do have local hubs which are more important, especially in e-learning when we are talking to multicultural, multilingual students. We should have local facilitators. As you know, the role of a teacher has changed from sage on the stage. In the olden days, there are sages on the stages which are not mixing with the students. But now the role has changed to guide on the side. We have to guide them. As someone was saying, there was a discussion on youth and uh, aged people in the e-learning facility, it is sharing of experiences. When I studied our age-old old learners in our distance education, they are more happy in sharing their experience, and the youngsters are benefited with the experience of the old age learners. So it is sharing of experiences, and I am very happy with the global e-learning, and I should congratulate all, all the diploma faculty and also the learners. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Emmanuel, and then colleague. You can just pass it on. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it is with pleasure that I stand here as one of the um, beneficiaries of Diplo Foundation in terms of the online learning environment. Um, for people like us that work with the government, sorry, my name is Emmanuel and I am from Nigeria. For people like us that work with the government, it's extremely difficult to get um, a chance to have uh, additional training, especially when you're saddled with day-to-day -day responsibilities that do not permit you to leave your office um, for long periods. So the online learning environment was a great experience for me. and. It was quite competitive, uh, what I would rather call suggestive learning. You, you do not have an instructor that forces opinions, thoughts, and um, ideas down your throat. Rather, you are encouraged to come up with your own ideas on issues and share these ideas with your colleagues who, will, at the same time, share what they think about your ideas with you as well. So um, apart from that, uh, subsequently, we, uh, we, I personally have been able to develop some new um, forms of knowledge by having access to certain things, and thanks to Diplo, I was privileged to work with the um, 
IGF Secretariat in Geneva as a fellow, and I'm here at this meeting as well. So um, what I'm saying in essence is that this model is too good to be true. Normally, as we say, the best things in life are free. It is true. The best things in life are free. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have to excuse the two uh, panelists because they, they have to go to the ISAC meeting, which is starting. We'll take the last question for today. Not a question, uh, just my experience. Uh, I was one of the participants of the recent India course. And uh, one thing, uh, before joining the course, I never knew anything about internet governance. I only knew how the internet works. Be being a technical person, I always thought that that's the only way to look at it. Uh, but the course taught me about various aspects of internet governance, the legal and other things. An example which I wanted to state was uh, if you buy something from a different country, which taxes are applied, <laughs> which I never knew after, com after coming to internet governance is that angle also came to me. And uh, one thing uh, which I liked about the learning management system which nobody pointed out, it's as simple as Google. And uh, the bandwidth it takes is very low. So anybody sitting anywhere in the world can have a dial-up connection and can connect to the learning management system. And he can participate in the chat session also. Well, I had my study on that and saw that it doesn't take more than 20 kbps bandwidth at a time. So thank you, Diplo. Thank you, Nixie, for giving us that course and giving me a, allowing me to participate in these sessions where I could get some understanding on what all things are there, apart from technical things. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. This, this was a good point that you made about uh, bandwidth. We, we just forgot about it. But uh, thank you for that. Uh, so OK, well, let me just conclude with the, with the simple thing that um, what we do in Diplo, uh, and you're also a part of a community, uh, is based on trainings. And, uh, but everything else after the trainings is mostly up to you. Uh, keep in the process, keep in touch, and, and let us know of uh, all the initiatives that you might have, uh, all the, the projects that you want to do. Diplo will assist as much as possible uh, and, and let us keep in touch of course and for all the others we also uh, uh, just invite them to, to be in touch with us and, and let's do some partnerships and, and new initiatives huh? thank you diplo students to the booth <laughs> to the booth or here to the booth oh okay what are they in the briefing room huh? ah, it should be here huh? It's here, yes. Wait, ah, it's wait, here. Wait, okay. wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. Oh, Deeper students stay here. Okay, I'm sorry. My mistake. Mike, Mike. Yeah. Catch your who goes with it. Yep. You don't need, we don't need Mike. No, no, no. This is just a, it's an intro. Okay. Thank you for having me.